Hello, hello everyone! Welcome back to another Fallout 76 video. Are you ready to discover how to get your Torn armor set and unlock two bleeding passives from the set bonus? It is a grindy journey and here's everything you need to know. It has been a while since I farmed all the required materials to craft my Torn armor set, but for those wondering how to get it, here is a complete crafting guide. I know it took me a while to publish this one, I've had so many other ongoing projects lately, I apologize for being a little late here, but I think it's better late than never. Keep in mind that you need the complete set with 5 different pieces to enable the 2 bleed effects from the set bonus. Also, you will need at least 50 Vault 94 steel to craft a full set, which means you have to complete several runs over time. While crafting, the system will select random legendary effects for your Torn armor pieces, but there are a few effects that have been disabled for Torn in Solar armor as well. For example, you can get an Unwielding or Chameleon set no matter how many crafts you do, because these effects simply don't exist right now for this particular armor. Anyway, let's move on to the actual guide. First, let's look at where you can find the Torn plants. Getting the full set plants can be challenging sometimes. You need to finish Vault 94 missions in Standard or Expert modes to receive plants as part of the mission rewards. Remember that you can only get one plan per piece per character. You will never get extra plans and sometimes you won't receive any plans, even though we haven't learned all the plans yet. Just be patient and keep finishing raid missions because the system seems to randomize plan rewards in tiers. And when you trigger a tier in which you've got all the plans already, you won't receive any plans. I know, it doesn't make much sense, but it's how the system seems to work. Also, there are two other armor sets to collect here, the Solar Armor and the Strangler Heart Power Armor, which means getting all the plans for just the Torn Armor set can be difficult and time-consuming. In the end, you just have to grind and hope you will get what you need in the next Vault Raid completion. It is the way it is. Let's say you've got all the plans already, or you're about to be done with it. Well, you can start farming the materials you will need to craft a full set. The Torn set is equivalent to the Forest Scout armor by default. It looks like it, and the stats are also the same. Now, you need 10 different materials to craft all the pieces, including 50 Vault 94 steel and legendary modules. So, if you wish to craft a full set at once, I highly advise you to start farming beforehand, since you need a few days to gather everything you need. To reduce the amount of materials you need per craft, make sure to equip the Intelligence Park Armorer, it should be ranked 3 for the most efficient reductions. I'm providing you here a comparison side by side of the required materials with the perk on the right and without the perk on the left. As you can see, it's a huge difference. Some materials are reduced to almost half, like plastic, but the most impactful one is Vault 94 Steel. Without the perk, you would need 30 per piece versus 10 per piece with the perk on. That would be 65 in total, way more runs to complete if you don't use the perk. Make sure to be strategic here, save time and resources and get the same result, a full set. While crafting, you should understand that some legendary effects are impossible to get, as data miner, undefined mention, chameleon, cloaking, regenerating, unwielding and improved sneaking have all been disabled for torn and solar armor sets. Too bad for us bloodied build players, I'd still be grinding the vault otherwise, I don't wish to move on to vanguard while using 20 bloodied weapons. Uh, oh well. While doing Vault Raids, there is something you should remember about the mission rewards. You only get 2 Vault Steel in Novice, but you will get 4 Vault Steel in Standard and 6 in Expert. 
I know most people don't finish the missions in expert because it is very difficult and it requires lots of coordination and communication. So for an average player, you need at least 12 days doing vault raids in standard or at least eight days completing novice and standard every single day. It is quite a grinding to do and honestly, not everyone can run the raids daily. So it might take much longer than these quick calculations I just did. The daily cap is 12 steel if you manage to do novice, standard and expert all in one day. But this is the only way to get Vault 94 steel for the Torn armor set. There is no way around this one sadly, so you've got to do it. Getting legendary modules shouldn't be much of an issue, head to the Prevere at the Barclay Springs station and buy 5 of them. Adjust the number because the default is 10 per purchase and you don't need that much. Each module costs 50 scripts, so make sure to scrap some legendary items along the way. You will need 250 scripts for 5 modules, note that the daily cap is 150 scripts per day, which means you need at least 2 days to get this amount if you don't have any script at the moment. It is quite simple, no? You will need tons of plastic since this armor is mostly made out of it. My best suggestion is to head to the Watauga High School to the cafeteria lounge where you can find dozens of plastic, plates, forks, spoons and knives. And that's at least 100 plastic per day. The downside is that you can server jump. It has a 24 hour spawn cooldown. But that should be fine. If you collect everything, you should have more than enough. But in this case, if you don't, there is another fantastic location for plastic, which is at the Morgantown High School at the gym area. Hmm. They are all at high school, surprisingly. You'll find tons of sports balls that contain plastic, such as golf balls, bowling pins, and even plastic pumpkins. You can also get about 100 plastic here. That's more than enough for a full torn set and something else. I mean, if you are short in plastic, these two locations are enough. You don't need to go anywhere else, really. Rubber is the easiest material to farm in this guide because there is one single location with plenty of rubber to gather at once. Head to Grafton and again enter the high school there. At the gym area you will find a storage room, a little one, with two huge containers, one inside and one at the door. They are both filled with sports balls. If any of them is empty for you and you haven't collected recently, just sever jump if you haven't picked in the last 24 hours. It should be there. Collect all the basketballs and kickballs and voila! You'll have about 100 rubber once you scrap them. This is my usual source of rubber. I always come here for it and it's so quickly and easy. Leather shouldn't be an issue for you either. Head to the treetops and delight yourself with tons of leather packs lying around the place. Make sure to climb it carefully because it is quite tricky. Don't fall and look into the wooden containers around because most leather bundles will be inside of them. There is some plastic here too, such as bowling pins. Also, there are some on top of shells and objects as you keep going up. I mean, leather bundles, of course. I usually miss a few when I'm not being extremely focused. They kind of blend in with the furniture, so maybe it's worth to double check the place before you leave, if you still need more, of course. It might take you a bit to spot and collect everything. This place has many levels, but you'll surely get enough for your set. You can disregard the last level. There is no leather there at all. As usual, there is a 24 hour cooldown for these items as well. Ballistic fiber is a pain in the butt to get. Uh, I mean, it is not difficult to get it here at Fort Defiance. It's just the place is huge and filled with ghouls and levels, cracks, tricks. It's not so pleasant to navigate, but you can find all the ballistic fiber you need for your set in here. 
You don't need any other location really, unless you have zero ballistic fiber right now. Start at the easiest spot, head to the third floor, but you need to do the Brotherhood of Steel questline to access the elevator, otherwise you need to go all the way around from the left wing. Anyway, on the third floor you can easily find 4 to 5 military ammo bags, then it's time to head back slowly and check the rooms one by one. There is also plastic and other useful materials here if you want to farm some something else and be efficient. There are at least five more bags around in these rooms. I am leaving the path here so you can see where I went from the third floor forward. I believe there is way more but I had more than enough already so I stopped searching at this point. You can also visit Camp Venture and Camp McClintock if you need more of these resources. They are excellent places to find a little bit more of these military ammo bags. And one more thing, there are more rooms on the other wing, so feel free to explore the entire place. And as I said, there is way more than I'm showing here, but as you can see, this section is already too long, so I don't wish to make a ballistic fiber farming guide in this specific video. It's time to do some crafting, and don't forget your armor perk, it's very important. I also equipped super duper just in case, but it never triggered for me. I think it doesn't work for this type of crafting, do let me know if it ever worked for you. I'm wondering if I was just unlucky, very unlucky. Anyway, scrap all your materials first and craft one piece of each to complete your torn set. Again, remember the pieces will always be 3 star legendaries with random effects. There are certain effects that can be selected for Vault 94 armor, such as Unwielding and Chameleon. After crafting, just check your inventory, go to Upper Reel, and check for items with this sort of banner icon. Very easy to spot your torn armor this way. Then it's like unwrapping Christmas presents, find out what effects you have rolled. I hope you had better luck than I did. I managed to get a Vanguard piece and then a bunch of useless stuff. Like Troubleshooter and Hunters, Weightless and Exterminator. The last one is quite decent for Vault Raids, but yeah, everything else, not so much. I use a full unwielding set, as you can imagine, I'm not about to swap my entire build right now. No way. Now, if you want to mod your new armor, you should head to the Enclave Armory, you need to do the Enclave questline to access everything, the mods are quite expensive though, I must warn you, and you can't learn the plans yet, they're not in game, so make sure to have spear caps to mod everything at once if that's what you want. It really is expensive to mod everything, but that's the way to do it, so now you know how to mod your new armor set. Now let's do some testing, you get 3 passive effects from the set bonus. First effect, melee attackers will receive a bleed debuff. Second, attacking enemies with melee weapons will also add a bleed debuff. And third, you are harder to detect while sneaking. Sounds great, right? But how powerful and useful is this bleeding effect? Well, I tested it on several enemies and there's the result. You can't see any damage number for this bleed, but you can clearly see the damage is minimal on both melee attacks and attackers. I'm speeding all the tests here and you can hardly see this mega slot's HP bar moving or going down. It's a level 40, so it's not like it's really high level. If we test it on a level 91 dead claw, you can see the HP bar moving from the bleeding effect. It is so minimal that it is not perceptible anymore. Creatures got tons of HP. Alright, but if you test on low level enemies, you can kill them rather quickly, just with the passive bleeding. Too bad not every enemy is melee, but it surely helps against ghouls, animals and some scorched. Too bad again that this set is endgame and difficult to get, otherwise I would recommend it for low level players. Seriously, it seems to make a difference only when you're dealing with low level enemies. I know every little damage helps, but in this case I'm skeptical. I did some more testing 
and it also depends on the enemy's defenses. For example, this level 68 ghoul seems to be taking way more bleed damage while attacking me than the level 40 mega slot or the level 91 dead claw. This level 33 ant is also going down rather quickly, but probably because it has an insane attack speed. Therefore, more bleed damage is applied. The target that seems to get the most damage is Melee Scorched. This guy went down really fast from the passive alone. Maybe because the defense against bleed is rather low. I'm not sure how the damage and defense rules work here, but there you go. These are my test results. I hope you enjoyed it and that you find it useful. Overall, the bleed damage helps, of course it does, but it doesn't make much of a difference. Especially if you're fighting endgame mobs like in Vault 94. These mobs are bullet sponges and their defenses seem to be the highest in-game, after the Scorched Beast Queen, I'd say. I don't have a sneak build, so I don't know how much harder it is to detect you with the Torn Armor set, but the bleed effect didn't amuse me, far from it. I mean, most people don't even use melee builds in endgame. I have a melee build, but I am often using my shotgun or heavy weapons, because it is so much safer and smarter, really. You do more damage, you die less, and the game is overall more enjoyable to play with ranged weapons, especially with a bloodied build. It is interesting how the bleed damage takes down low-level enemies rather quickly and barely does any damage to high-level ones. It makes me believe that the bleed damage is fixed instead of working by a percentage. For example, 2% damage of the target's HP would probably make more sense. Otherwise, targets with lots of HP, defense or both will hardly be affected by this bleed. Just my thoughts here. In the end, no, this armor set is really not worth the trouble. It's a lot of grinding and you might take months to get the legendary effects that you want. All for what? Some bleed damage that is highly effective against melee low level enemies? Really? When we can one hit everything with basically any build that is high end. It really doesn't make much sense to me, plus the armor stats are the exact same as the forest scout armor. So why the hell should you even bother to get it, unless you have nothing better to do in game? Then sure, it's probably a decent investment, but if you have plenty to do right now, then really just forget it. It's not like you're going to get much value out of it. What do you guys think about the Torn armor set? Do you think it's worth the trouble? Do you find this bleed effect any useful? Let me know everything in the comment section below. I was quite excited at first, but once I tested out the set bonus, it was such a disappointment for me. But oh well, what can we do? Maybe the upcoming armor sets in Wastelanders will be better and more impactful in terms of effects. For now, that's going to be everything. Thanks for watching everyone, I also have a complete crafting guide on the Strangler Heart Power Armor, go ahead and check it out if you are curious about it. If this is your first time here, then don't forget to hit the subscribe button below and enable the notifications bell for more content like this. For anyone who would like to support me even further, then click on the Patreon link below where you can find tiers of any preference. That's all I have for this one today. Take care everyone and I will see you very soon in the next video. Adios, bye bye!